Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on wherever you are in the world. Welcome again to DelphiCon 2023, celebrating 28 years of Delphi. Is it really that long? It's pretty amazing. My name is Ian Barker, and I'm an Embarcadero Delphi MVP. Today's session is called How We Used Delphi as a Weapon in a Real Fight and Won. Uh, you can read all about this session on the blog post on the main uh, Embarcadero blog if you go to tinyurl.com forward slash Delphi versus competition or VS competition. Uh, you can see that on the bottom slide there. If you need to get in touch with me, feel free to email me, uh, ian.barker at gmail.com or go to one of my websites or follow me on Twitter. It's up to you. Uh, it's all entirely optional. So, how we use Delphi as a weapon in a real fight and won. The thing about Delphi is uh, it's it, it's not got the massive marketing budgets. It's not that kind of super sexy new technology, fluffy, backed by um, you know the likes of Google with unlimited bazillions of budgets. Um, it's it's there and it's chugging away in the background. And it reminds me a lot of really um, the phrase that Winston Churchill used when he was talking about Bletchley Park, where they built the um, the first computers, really, the, the, the bomb with an E on the end, as it was called, to uh, decode the Enigma ciphers. And Winston Churchill described the staff at the ultra-top-secret Bletchley Park as the goose that laid the golden eggs but never cackled. And that's the trouble with uh, Delphi, really. It's silently successful. It's chugging away in the background of all sorts of enterprise applications, doing some important work. Uh, you name it, it's there. Banking and uh, hospital uh, apps. And if you look at some of our enterprise stories on the blog at the moment, you'll see it really is absolutely everywhere. And in fact, in I believe, in almost any given situation, it's the best choice. It's the fastest to market. It's almost always the lowest amount of code. It's always been about low code right from day one. Using components to develop apps, drop that uh, functionality on and off you go. It's, it's very, very straightforward and very easy to do. Um, I, I don't understand why anybody would work harder and write dozens and dozens of lines of code for a, you know instead of just dropping a component on. But there you go. It's also rock solid. Delphi programs just keep going and going and going and going. Uh, it doesn't matter if you you know upgrade your operating system. You started on XP and you upgraded to Windows um, ME, I think it was, and then Windows uh, 95 and Windows Vista and uh, and then up to Windows 7. Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10, Windows 11, it doesn't matter. Those same apps will keep running, weirdly enough, and that's why, you know, Delphi 7 is still used by a lot of people, and Delphi 5, you know, people still like those apps. Um, but you're missing out on some of the modern uh, features that you get in, in things like um, Rad Studio 11. But because of its, its almost self-contained uh, nature, it doesn't crash, it doesn't die just because someone didn't install a particular .NET framework. There are some dependencies, of course, you know, databases change, technologies change, but really your Delphi program is just going to keep going on and on and on. And so really Delphi is the software equivalent of Churchill's silent goose that lays those golden eggs. It it just keeps going and uh, keeps working without any problems whatsoever. Once you write that Delphi app and you've got it working, you've got it debugged, you can guarantee it's solid. That's what's great about Delphi. And there are bigger marketing budgets out there from the likes of Microsoft, who could buy you know most of, of uh, France, I'm sure, with a, a small check. And uh, they make a lot of noise in other directions. They're very, very sex successful at marketing. There's nothing wrong with their offerings as such. But, um, you know, there's a big splash made for um, React, for example, from Facebook originally. Um, and so really what happened was people were saying, well, you know, you say Delphi is good. You say it's useful. But if we were to compare it with X or Y um, framework in a fair fight, how would Rad Studio with Delphi really do? How would it actually do? So Embarcadero thought, well, do you know what? Let's sponsor some comparison research. And by that, we meant real genuine, a friendly contest like those two judokas there who are about to get to grips and grapple. Is Rad Studio with Delphi really any good compared to popular alternatives? And that's a good question. The methodology and results are described in a freely available white paper. And it's a real thing. It's a proper scientific white paper. All of the thinking that goes on to the competition, the, the kind of... Uh, 
uh, methodologies that we use to compare the frameworks. It's all explained in there. It's open. Anybody can go and read on it and, and check that, you know, there wasn't any sleight of hand when something did well and there wasn't any sleight of hand making something look worse than it actually did. If something performed badly, there was a good reason for it. Either the framework wasn't really built for the job to do that or um, all that, you know, it just wasn't up to the job compared to the comp competition. Um, Delphi didn't slash absolutely everything. Let's, let's not be uh, ridiculous here. We can't, um, um, in all honesty, say, hey, you know, it's always going to be the best option ever. We think it's the best option for 99.9% .9 of things. But, you know, there's going to be a time when, um, obviously, uh, Red Studio is, is not the best choice. But there's few and far between. And that's what this uh, methodology and results in this white paper were designed to do, to show you that there, there wasn't any um, trickery to try and... Um, um, make things look better than they really were. It's all open. Who fought? Who competed in this in this competitive analysis? Well, Rad Studio with Delphi and uh, some Microsoft.net using WPF, which is probably one of the most popular frameworks out there, and still very popular and very credible. Credible. We, you know, there wasn't. Uh, um, we didn't choose a horrible, <laughs> useless uh, type of technology for creating apps. And Electron, which uh, I, I'm not a big fan of myself. And these were the three technologies that were, were chosen. Okay, The people that we got to do it were not slackers either. The programmers there for the Red Studio with Delphi, we chose um, MVPs. I was one of them. And I never claimed to be the world's best programmer. I'm just a programmer. I get up every day and I write code for a living. That's what I do. But um, there are... There are other people out there who are MVPs who I think are very, very smart, and some of those were involved as well. Um, and the same with the .NET people. We hired some contractors, or Embarcadero hired some contractors, who, again, were not slackers. They were not um, useless people. We deliberately chose weak um, developers to make things look good. No, these were people that were earning a living writing code. And same with Electron as well. They were, they were proper developers. It was a, it was a fair contest. Um, and let's be clear: the, the frameworks were chosen not be chosen not because they were lame or obscure or um, something weird like Haskell, <coughs> which is that um, you know it's kind of obscure language. No, quite the opposite. They were chosen because they are popular and widely used, broadly used by lots of people, and they're current. They weren't. We didn't pick on something that was out of date. WPF is is. Um, largely deprecated I think um, to some extent by Microsoft but actually it's still actively available and actively used by thousands and thousands hundreds of thousands of people same with Electron there are lots of apps out there you're probably using one uh, on your machine and not even knowing it it's a great framework for achieving what it wants to achieve but we believe there are better options um, it's got some deficiencies it used to have some real problems with memory for example so um, you know they're not they're not terrible obscure frameworks they are the top ones that you can get around to produce apps and you know we could choose experienced developers we didn't pick one that um, only six or seven people in the world can use no the we, we, we chose a framework where your average good developer would be someone who was well experienced to use that and there were a choice of challenges. I was only in, involved in one of them, and that's the one I'm going to talk about. I forget what the other two were, to be honest, but I think there was like a, a file manager type app and an XML parser. I, I honestly can't remember, but the, the, the white paper um, explains them. And then the third one that I was involved in was um, to recreate the Windows Calculator app. Now, uh, recreating the Windows Calculator app. We all know what it looks like. We've seen it everywhere. It's on every version of Windows there is. It sounded easy to me. It's not a difficult app. And because I'm very lazy, I mean very busy, um, it sounded ideal. I had plenty of time. And the requirement was to pick a framework of our choice, VCL or FireMonkey FMX, if you're a developer using Delphi, and encode the app in that framework as quickly and as accurately as you possibly can. So I had to think about this. Then I had a really dumb, uh, smart idea. If I planned the app out correctly, I could create multiple versions from the same code base. And that's what Delphi is really good at. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You have one project and you can produce uh, apps that go to different targets. And if I could write one app, then why, why not write eight? You know, iOS, Android and all the rest of it. And in fact, why write one app when I could actually write nine? 
So I decided to really take advantage of Delphi. I decided I would write a plain VCL app, just what you can do with the VCL straight out of the box without any extra trickery, any components or anything like that. I would produce a Fluent UI app, also using the VCL. Again, no trickery, a set of components, but nevertheless, um, just some straightforward uh, code to produce it. And uh, a FireMonkey app, again, for Windows and 32, 64-bit. I didn't count those separately. I suppose there's an extra you know, four or five apps there as well. Um, Mac OS, iOS, and Android, because really, there isn't doing anything particularly difficult. It's showing some buttons on the screen. Uh, in whatever your chosen um, UI framework is and making some clicky stuff happen. And whilst I was doing that, well, if I took advantage of some of the components that are available to Delphi, then I could produce a conventional web app, just a normal web page that would act just like the calculator, look like the calculator, except it would be a web page. And while I was doing that, um, with this using the same framework, which I'll talk about in a minute, I may as well produce a progressive web app so you can download it to your mobile device and be offline and still use that calculator, even though it's a web page. Why not? If you can do one, you may as well do the other. Oh, and uh, I thought, well, if I can do that, I may as well choose an Electron app written in Delphi, just because I'm mean. And yes, I targeted Electron as well. I know one of the competing frameworks was Electron, but I thought, well, let's write a Delphi app and target Electron at the same time using the same code, just to really, really um, dig people in the ribs, shall we say. Picking the frameworks. Well, VCL is dead easy, so we can just use the default controls. There's, there's absolutely no, no thought required there. All the controls we could possibly need would be available. Uh, FireMonkey is similarly powerful. And uh, again, any effects that I wanted to do, I could do in FireMonkey at the drop of a hat. It wasn't difficult. Um, for the Fluent UI version, that's a bit more complicated. If you've watched some of my webinars about the Fluent UI, then you'll know that th there's a lot of additional stuff that goes on with the Fluent UI that isn't always obvious. And so I chose the style controls from our media dev. It's also the people behind the uh, Delphi um, themes and styles. Um, but if you go to there, you can see the controls I use. If you want to download the example app, and this is available on the, uh, the net, I'll talk about this later, then you will need to install the trial version of the Fluent UI if you're going to open the Fluent UI and see what I did there. And for all the web types, all the web app types, and that is conventional web app, a PWA, and uh, also the Electron app, I use the TMS uh, WebCore framework, web.tmssoftware.com. Um, fairly easy, so a little bit of extra help from components, because that's what we do. Um, Delphi and Rad Studio is a component-based uh, development system, and that's what makes it low-code as well, so I don't have to write lots and lots of code. If I wanted to target the very different user interfaces, then it's vital that the UI, the user interface, the bit that people see and touch, um, is completely separated from the actual implementation of the actual calculator code behind the scenes. What that meant was that I don't want to have all the actual business logic. What happens when you press uh, the subtract button, for example, um, that shouldn't be bound into the user interface. So in, in the traditional sense, shouldn't double click on the button that says um, uh, multiply or, uh, uh, or the asterisk actually, uh, and then put the code in there to do the, the multiplication. No, you should have some form of event or in my case, um, a controller that would do that. And the other thing to be careful of is that VCL, FireMonkey, and web apps have very different properties and event models. So what would work for the VCL wouldn't necessarily work for, for the FireMonkey code unmodified. And the same with the web apps. When you trigger things to happen on the web apps, web apps are by uh, their nature asynchronous. So you click something, you haven't got a guaranteed, uh, you know, inline response you sometimes have to wait for a response back from from the uh the browser so those are the kind of things that had to go into what i was going to do um with coding yeah simple calculator app but there's a few little gotchas in there the obvious choice was to enforce the separation of the ui and calculation code itself by creating an uh using an i interface and so that would mean that I would have a form, which would be the VCL form, the FMX form, the HTML form, or whatever. And then uh, an iCalculator interface that that VCL form would interact with through the type of a controller. So it's like a model view controller, but it's not. Uh, but there would be a controller that uh, only interacted with the interface. 
the eye interface, the eye calculator. And then uh, back behind there would be the implementation of the T calculator, the concrete class, shall we say. So what does the interface itself look like? Well, the interface allows us to write the URL code so we don't use a concrete implementation, as it's called. And I had a look at the different functions on a calculator, and uh, the Windows calculator in particular. So what can you do? Well, this is how we think about abstraction of the, uh, the real-world objects. There's some operators, and the operators do things to uh, the, the numbers that you see on the screen. And when those operators are pressed, then we need to know what type of operator it is. So are they pressing the percentage button? Are they uh, pressing the divide button, the multiply button, the subtract, or the add button? And then you've got the number buttons. So if I press the number one, then the number one should appear on the screen. And if I press it again, then it's 11. And if I press a zero, then it's 110. And so there was some logic behind there to say, people don't just type in the number like they do in an edit box and then hit calculate. No, you actually press those buttons and they build up the number. That was a little bit of a, a conceptual thing we had to think about. And a few other things as well, like I would need to actually set the calculator display and that would need me to have a callback um, because what we can't do is have the class directly updating the user interface uh, controls because if you remember I want to try and reuse the back end code for the front end uh, implementation to be different. So I couldn't say for example that the display was an edit box or a label because on the fire monkey it could be a different control altogether and on the web apps then it could be once again a different uh, control altogether it could be a panel with the caption or it could be a region or something like that so i needed to have a callback and what would happen is that the actual user interface when um, it instantiated the object, the eye calculator interface, it would pass over this callback and say, when something happens, tell me through this particular method. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And that would then say, oh, here's some information that you need to update. Ping. When it was time for the calculator to update its display, it would trigger that event back on the user interface and we would get the display updating. Oh, and there was a history function. You can do, you know, how you can do um, R for recall history and all the rest of it. Those functions needed to be in there as well. The I calculator interface defines the actions that the user can initiate. So addition, subtraction, display the total, and maintain the history, as I just said. Implementing the I calculator interface is the T calculator class. Now, the T calculator class is, uh, in terms of jargon, is what we call a concrete class. So as you can see at the top there, where it says T calculator equals class, it is a T interfaced object, and it is implementing the I calculator interface. So what it means is that we agreed to the contract that we're laying out in that, that I calculator interface, and we're saying that we will implement all of the required methods and events that the I calculator interface uh, specifies in our concrete class. And on the left there, you can't see it very large at the moment, but if you download the um, example app, you'll be able to see it. But you can see there a little bit of the implementation of the uh, T calculator class. So if I have the, someone press the equals button, then what I need to do is actually a, perform the calculation. So uh, 10 plus 11 equals 21. And I need to work out that it's 21 when someone presses the equal button. So if you can see on the left hand side uh, where it says equals press, that's that's where that comes up. So really T calculator class is doing that implementation of that interface. Updating the display. Well, as I said earlier on, this is a little bit more tricky because um, web apps, they're asynchronous. And also it's good practice that you never have your um, business logic directly updating the UI because it means if I do it properly, which I did in this app, I can then implement the user interface um, separately and have it completely different for each of the apps. Uh, so the performance of that is controlled by a controller and the controller is the thing that sets everything up and says, hi, I'm going to have this callback and uh, whenever you need to update my display, just uh, call my callback and let me know. So it's, uh, it's triggered in a way that's um, friendly for the web, friendly for um, FireMonkey and it's friendly for VCL. You could implement that as something completely different. Um, it would still work as long as you could actually handle the callbacks um, 
what you do in that callback that update display is up to you so as you can see there on the bottom left history label dot caption is uh, just going to display the contents of the property of the F calculator control history um, easy peasy there were some subtleties actually in the implementation of the calculator if you look at the genuine calculator app it's actually very slightly transparent and i you know, at the time i wrote this app i think it was windows 10 was the common uh, operating system because it was a couple of years back and uh this is carried through even more for windows 11 and uh so you could have this semi-transparency also if you clicked on the buttons um the buttons actually flashed they were giving you what's known as affordance to show you that they were clickable and also giving you some feedback to say that you'd actually click them so that you didn't just blindly go did that work uh, when i click that button so it, it flashes um, so a couple of things i needed to implement there was what would happen if someone clicks away from the app and so the app loses focus that would then change the transparency and make it opaque so that you couldn't see through it that is windows behavior for um, fluent ui actually and uh, UI3 is carried on today and uh, and also needed to implement what would happen when people clicked on those buttons to make those buttons flash because how they flash on a VCL and how they flash on FireMonkey and how they flash on um, Fluent UI and how they flash on web is all completely different each one was different now all of that behavior really is entirely cosmetic it doesn't affect how the calculator actually calculates in the background and so we can allow the form to handle that. Now, if I was doing proper mu uh, model view, view model, um, I would actually have the, the view model deal with all of the uh, behavior of the user interface and do an even more nicely separated abstract. Uh, but actually, uh, that's not the case with this particular app. We didn't um, do this. This was done much more quickly than I would have liked, and I should have gone and sat down and had to think about this and do it that way. But actually, implementing that way, I did separated the user interface quite nicely, but didn't make it overly complicated. So we allowed the form to do the things like updating the panels and doing all that that flashing. And so, as you can see there, um, on the form deactivate um, option. There's an alpha blend that says false. And so I'm turning off the alpha blending on the app, which is a property on the actual app itself. And when the app gets the focus again, uh, when the form is activated, then the alpha blend is turned on. So that controls the transparency. That's how uh, that works. Um, every framework was diverse. So web buttons would work very differently to native buttons. This meant there was no obvious advantage in uh, creating this generic uh, visual controller. I probably would have had to have had a couple of different controllers uh, and double the work. It was uh, it was not something I really wanted to do. Subtleties of the implementation. Um, well, all I had to do was really create the main form for the project. If you were to implement fully the main calculator in Windows 11, it's it's actually grown to be something a lot more. I'm not sure if you know, but the Windows 11 calculator is capable of doing date calculations, for example. Um, so, you know, it's something that we you don't notice uh, until someone points it out and they think, oh, that's very useful. So you can actually say, um, what is 65 days from today? And uh, the Windows calculator can do that. But we were told to only very specifically focus on the functionality of the regular calculator. I didn't do the scientific version, neither did anybody else as far as I'm aware. Um, but that's another view that the Windows calculator and Windows 11 supports. Windows 10, uh, not quite the same. This was early on in the cycle for Windows 10 and still that calculator was almost unchanged from the days of XP. A little bit more fancy, but um, not that much difference. So creating the main form was, wasn't that difficult. And the interface controlling the class would do all the other hard stuff in the background, what would happen when those buttons are pressed. Now, um, for the VCL, weirdly enough, I discovered that the best way to um, replicate the behavior of the Windows buttons was to use panel controls. <laughs> now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, um, but the panel controls actually would then be able to do that flashing that you saw. If I did it with a button, the problem with the button is it's actually a proper Windows button. Uh, the T button is, is is designed to be a button has got lots of additional behavior that you didn't actually want for the calculator app. I know it sounds crazy, like well, it's a button. Well, yeah, maybe a button, but a button is just at the end of the day something that you click. And so I use panel controls for the buttons. 
Weird, but true. Um, the timer that you see on that form there was to help with the uh, flashing. So it would flash and then the timer would kick in after I think a quarter of a second or something like that and unflash. Not that fancy, but it worked. Uh, subtleties of the implementation. Well, this uh, is the Fluent UI version. And the Fluent UI version uh, uses these our media dev Fluent UI controls. And uh, when you look at it, uh, which you'll see shortly, it looks like the real thing. It's just an exact copy of the Windows uh, calculator. It's very, very good. And uh, also the, the uh, web core version, same project. The code in the background was exactly the same and uh, once I'd written that and laid it out as I had there again with I think these are regions I used or something like that rather than panels but once I'd laid out the user interface um, I had a working pure HTML web app that worked in any web browser and would be served up by any web server um, so Apache or Nginx or whatever you pick one and uh, you know your your local web hosting company could host it and uh, because of the way their framework works it meant I could also click the button and say yes I would like a progressive web app as well a PWA and uh, and it also supported that um, out of the box so that was a couple of clicks once I'd written the original app I think the time to produce the PWA including me reading the documentation to see how I'd do it uh, make sure there weren't any catches was about five minutes it was literally re re compile and off you go the electron app well <laughs> bear in mind that we were pitted against or shall i say matched against um wpf and electron programmers i thought well if i'm going to do all these apps once i've done the original web page app and i've done the pwa why not do an electron app because an electron app at the end of the day is basically a node js um web browser I suppose uh, with um, some JavaScript in the background and some web pages and the good thing about that is that there's a little checkbox in the uh, TMS web core again and where you can pick the target and say I'd like to target an electron app so I thought just to be really really horrible um, let's take all our existing Delphi code and hit a button and produce an electron app the time to produce electron app was again about two to five minutes um, it literally was recompile and boof up it came no difficulties no playing around with any special settings uh, i'd never really tried it before i think i tried doing an electron app before um, with webcore just to see what happened but uh no special skills i just used my delphi skills and off it went uh, it was a in interesting experience but i just wanted to do it just to be mean to the electron people there's nothing wrong with the electron guys it's just you know if you're gonna um if you're gonna uh, take revenge and uh, show off why not um, and this was a competition don't forget so the way it worked was um, each developer was timed we were given a certain proportion of time to do some research and then we could pick uh, and I didn't know this at the time actually but we could have picked a ready-made um, calculator back end um, to use because that was one of the options that I didn't notice um, I personally wrote my own and uh, in fact um, there was a bug in it and I can't remember what the bug was but I think it was like square roots or something didn't work might have been factorials or something there was some some weird function that didn't work um, but but the principle was you know could you create this app and could it work yes it could uh, I know that um, one of the other MVPs had a, a calculator um, uh, module that he'd already um, used before and he used that <laughs> But there was nothing to stop anybody else doing that. The, the rules were quite clear. Um, but you were timed. And so there were two times. One was how long would it take you going slowly, doing a lot of research and all the rest of it. And once you'd done that research, um, could you do a speed run? And the speed run was, now that you've got all the notes laid out and all the rest of it, um, could you go as quickly as possible and produce the app? And it was really like having some um, ready-made notes from a... Um, a project manager or something like that saying here's how to lay out the screens here's the sections of codes that you need and, and off you go and do it um, the results of the work of the developers were objectively measured and in fact the white paper goes into quite a lot of detail about how it objectively measures it um, and what the criteria were they used an um, agnostic criteria um, to uh, uh, measure the app 
uh, they wanted to make sure that the criteria they chose were fair. So if there was a specific disadvantage or slowness in a particular area, they didn't want to make it um, artificially penalising people. Um, I, I don't know quite how they did it, but if you read through the, the white paper, it explains it. And the met metrics that they measured include the length of time to develop it, uh, the design approach that you used, the total lines of code that you wrote, and the lines of code that you used to implement the user interface. And the idea was to say, look, if we look at these and we measure these different white approaches and these different frameworks, where's the slow bit? You know, is it really, really slow to design the user interface of a Delphi app, but really, really quick to make the back end of it work? Or is it the other way around? Is actually doing the build, the final process to produce a, um, an artifact or an executable or, or a HTML or whatever it is, is that also the very, very slow part? So can you do everything else and design the, the actual user interface very quickly? Um, but there's a bottleneck when you actually come to um, output that, that, that thing as a real product. It was, it was very comprehensive. I forget how many pages the white paper's got, but it's a lot. And, you know, how do we do? Well, the Delphi developers absolutely crushed it. And there was more than one of us. And that helped to even out different people's skills. I've got a lot of skills in user interface design and things like that. Um, some of the others were much more um, technical, but the user interface uh, design was not their strong point. Um, and some people were all rounders and, you know, make me and anybody else look uh, awful. Uh, but that's a good thing. You know, we want to blend of people with different skills. I consider myself to be reasonably competent. That's why I'm, I'm an MVP. Um, but even so, I wouldn't say I was the absolute rocket scientist amongst the people that were there, and that's that's a good thing. Um, no good if our rocket scientist developers can do better than uh, average other programmers, and that's that's a good thing. They chose multiple WPF people and multiple Electron people. Um, but if you look at the grading there, Delphi was way ahead. I mean, streets ahead on almost every single metric. Not all of them. Um, you know, let's let's be clear on this. The um, Electron people on the speed run, which was where they had ready-made stuff and bolted the thing together, they they whooped us uh, completely. Okay, but uh, the actual development time in the first place, we whooped them, and by a significant proportion of time, uh, Electron took ten hours, and um, uh, we took oh, an average of four point six hours to do the development so this wasn't a short project but it was a full calculator i don't know how long microsoft took to develop theirs um probably just as long i don't know if they used wpf i've never really checked but you know it uh, it was one of those things um electron did better uh than wpf but it still came second and second if you look at those numbers by a significant amount as well in some places the weirdest surprise to me, <clears throat> and that is that WPF lost on every single metric. And uh, that's very odd because WPF is extremely popular. It's been ruling the roost for many, many years. It's been out for uh, since 1990 something. And um, yeah, it's very widely used. And I, I would have thought that um, <clears throat> experienced WPF developers, of which there are many, many people, would be able to produce an app um you know more quickly and bolt things together but actually the proof of the pudding was in the eating when we analyzed all the things that went on um delphi and electron were both way quicker than uh, wpf for the development time the overall development time um, the wpf people took 30 hours which is quite remarkable um the final speed run um, again, we were significantly faster than WPF, and Electron was faster still. I don't know quite how they did it, but you know they bolted things together ready-made, so that's good. And um, total lines of code, well, um, Electron actually was less, and that's the JavaScript code to make things happen. Um, but um, the Delphi code there, you know, we were half of what WPF needed to make things happen. The user interface code, well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 72 lines of code to implement the whole user interface. And I don't think I varied that across the many projects that I did. Um, I think they only measured a couple of my projects. I think VCL1 might have been one of them and maybe the PWA app or something like that would be the other one. But even so, my, my lines of code didn't vary very much. And this was an average of all the different uh, developers. Um, Electron, again, um, more than us. 
to implement lines of code for the UI, and then WPF, well, you know, three times as much again as Electron. So that's a significant uh, increase. I don't really, uh, I don't really understand why, but what can you say? And a percentage of code that was UI code uh, for Delphi was 18% which means we're doing less work to make things appear on screen, which you could, would kind of expect um, from a framework where you literally draw the screens <laughs> on the form and off you go. Um, didn't take into account, obviously, the runtime library, but then they didn't do that with Electron either with all of the, uh, the uh, components that they pulled in. But did you notice one particular thing? Electron took 10 hours to develop. Uh, 10 hours. And that was quite amazing because after I produced my TMS web core HTML version, which probably took me about an hour of fiddling around and making, um, you know, uh, navigation work properly to the actual app in the first place, making things click because I had to work it out and, you know, make those panels work correctly. Uh, once that was done, it took me less than five minutes to create the Electron version. I think it was two or three minutes. I um, hit a button and boom, it worked. Uh, I didn't actually do anything. I just compiled it and ran it. Uh, under five minutes to create an Electron version, which is, is uh, uh, you know, I think that if I was an Electron person, then I would be looking at uh, Adelphi and saying, how come we are so quick um, to produce those Electron apps? It was, it was a creditable app. It worked. Anyway, to read more information, to read uh, more about the research for this uh, particular um, project, then download the white paper. If you go to the link that you see on the screen there, lp.embarcadero.com forward slash discovering the best framework, um, or just go onto the Embarcadero site and go to resources and the white papers section is in there. Um, you can read all about it and get the, uh, the, the white paper for you. There's also a GitHub repository with the code from the various projects along with other useful materials. So you can see what we did and see how we did it pull it apart and say, oh, I would have done it better. If you, you maybe you would have done. Maybe there are Delphi people there who are going, oh, Ian, you did it completely the wrong way. I would have did, done it this way. It would have been much quicker. Good, good, good. I'm glad you can say that. Because, and I genuinely mean that because I, as I said before, I, I never claim to be the world's best programmer. I just claim to be a programmer. I get up every day and write code. Um, but there are plenty of people out there that are going to be better in some areas and plenty of people that are in better in other areas. If you can do better, what does that prove? That proves that Delphi would have been even quicker in the comparison research. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Show us how. And there's also a GitHub repository with all that code there, as I said. Um, so github.com forward slash embarcadero forward slash uh, comparison research. And what was the whole point of this? Well, you know, as I said about Churchill's uh, goose that laid the golden eggs and never cackled, um, it's important to recognise that Delphi, with Rad Studio and Delphi, you, you can do almost anything. Go to a Raspberry Pi. You can do that today. There's a solution for it. In fact, it's from TMS. And they also target that with their, um, their, their frameworks. Uh, if you want to put it on a cheap Amazon Fire tablet, then just target Android. And it worked just fine. I have a, a tablet behind me now, and it's running some uh, apps that I've written in Delphi. Um, you can target Windows, you can target Mac, uh, OS, Intel, and ARM. I have an ARM uh, Mac Mini, and it works absolutely fine, and so do plenty of other people as well. Um, iOS, it's always been ARM for, for years and years and years, but now it's their own Apple Silicon. Uh, and Android, again, target uh, all sorts of types of android devices uh, tablets and phablets i think they call them where they're big phones that have got all sorts of weird screens and uh, and you're very ubiquitous android phones even target the web as i showed you with the um the web core things there um but you could use intraweb you could use unigui there are many many options out there for um, targeting web apps and you can do this from a single code base in a project. And that's really what this comparison research proved from my point of view, that I could write that uh, calculator interface and it would be one set of code and it would work on all those projects. That was the easy part of it. It's absolutely a fact. And of course, as I said before, it will run and keep on running even if the whole operating system has been upgraded. It's the stoicism, the reliability, the rock solid doesn't crash uh, 
nature of Delphi apps that they you can run it from a USB memory stick, a thumb drive or whatever you want to call it. You can plug it in and run that app. Nothing needs to be installed. You could just run that app uh, on uh, on a Windows machine. There's lots of security considerations now, but um, no frameworks to download, nothing like that. Do that with the .NET app? No, that's not going to happen. It will not happen. That's the whole point about this. And look at the comparison research and uh, and you know see what we did some of the tricks and tips anyway my name is ian barker and i'm an embarcadero delphi mvp you can get me at ian.barker at gmail.com follow me on twitter if it's still around uh, at punctuation or if you want to look at my various websites and things like that then go to about.me forward slash ian barker the replay will be on the main embarcadero blog uh, on the same day that this webinar was originally broadcast so it should be now as i speak and you can see that on tinyurl.com forward slash delphi vs competition delphi versus the competition we had a lot of questions i i, I want to try and cover a few points because i, I want to make a couple of things clear um this is not an opportunity to bash wpf and it's not here to say electrons awful look how cool we are because actually the point of this was to try and demonstrate to, to, to bring some truth into a conversation about um, is Delphi any good? Is Delphi worthwhile? Does Delphi compete up there with some of the more popular um, frameworks? Because WPF has obviously got um, you know Microsoft's big bucks marketing behind it and things like that. Uh, and this was the whole point of this, but it was also to try and demonstrate that uh, the reason I wanted to target multiple platforms, and I was not asked to do that, I chose to do that. And the reason I chose to do that was because this is one of the strengths of Delphi, that even if we had taken as long as the Electron people to produce the, um, the initial uh, Delphi app, I could then, with only a few clicks, and maybe with a little bit of alterations in the code, target absolutely everything else. Now, .NET can do some of that as well, but it couldn't do all of what it could do, and the, the technology behind that is is a little bit different. So that that, that was the point that we we were not um, we were not trying to be uh, cruel or or say, hey, look, we're much better than WPF. Throw it out the window. Now we're just trying to emphasize the fact that you know we're up there with those others. Um, frameworks well, and, and you know. I will add my philosophy on the subject. A lot of times people are like, oh. Uh, Delphi is great because everything else is terrible. I'm like, if the only way you can say you're good is by saying everybody else is terrible, then you're setting the bar really low. <laughs> so yeah. my philosophy is, honestly, there are times I've used WPF before, and there may be times I use WPF again. All right. I'm not saying WPF is terrible, never should be used. But it's like Ian was saying before, right, is for most use cases, Delphi is the best choice. And so... Our goal was to show, hey, Electron's good. This is how you do Electron. This is how much time it's going to cost. These are the pros and cons. WPF's good. These are the pros and cons of WPF. Here's where Delphi fits in here. And look, you know, it's it's overall better. It has some pros and some cons. But here are the advantages of using Delphi. Because um, it's one of those things that a lot of people just get some idea in their mind, you know, when you have... Um, you know, Electron's new and exciting and WPF has got a lot of marketing behind it and you people get an idea in their mind like that's the only choice. It's like, no, there are other choices and here are the pros and cons of making those choices. Yeah, abs absolutely. And, and that was the thing that, you know, when we talk about this comparison research, it, it just... It, uh, too many people just think, oh, they're just trying to bash the opposition and that's not the case. We're trying to emphasize that we picked frameworks we knew were capable we knew that they're used by other people. So we wanted to be compared against a good framework, uh, you know, a good language that is in uh, use so that we can say, we're here with the others. We're, we're, we're not some kind of, you know, Cinderella language that is esoteric and hard to use. Now we're trying to emphasize that Delphi is the solution for lots of things. Um, I want to go through some of the questions because um, I know we're probably going to have quite a lot of time left over later, but I'd like to address some of the questions. Um, so uh, this one was uh, kind of amusing. Stop fight is already won. Microsoft deprecates too much. Well, you're, you're being nice there. But actually, our serious point about that is the fact that actually Delphi code from, um, you know, uh, even the days of Delphi 7 or even Delphi 4 or 5, um, will still run 
almost unchanged in Delphi 11. Now, actually, that is one of the things that M. Marcadero goes out of its way to try and do is to preserve, um, as, as far as possible, uh, preserve the ability for old Delphi code to be upgraded and run in a later um, version of Delphi. And Microsoft have a different ethos when it comes to some of their um, technologies. And, um, and Google also do that. And that is that many of these people do go off and, and deprecate some of their frameworks. That's their decision. That's how they do things. Backward um, compatibility is not always possible, I think, in what they do. But also, it's it's not how they think about things. Whereas Embarcadero with Rad Studio actually tries to um, think about um, bringing along all of that legacy code and not breaking it if at all possible. Sometimes you can't help it. It has to happen. But that, yeah, that 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 is one of the, the things that we can say there. Uh, fight is also one. Uh, it is a, it is pros and cons to that, actually, backwards compatibility. And I've been involved in lots of conversations at a number of different projects and companies and stuff about, you know, how to deprecate things, how to move forward, you know, how much, how important is backwards compatibility? Yeah. I, I, I feel like Embarcadero really goes out of their way to make it as backwards compatible as possible, and, which I think is a good thing because it is, you know, um, you have, I guess see you have an investment in your code and it's nice that they respect that. So, and some, some projects that people have in Delphi that are, are quite intricate, they're banking apps or something like that, and may have millions of lines of code. And, uh, you, you know, if you suddenly get an announcement from Microsoft that your, your whole framework is being pulled from underneath you. And oh, by the way, you've got to recode all these bits because we've changed something. And that's a significant decision um point for you in terms of what are you going to do and this is sometimes why some people abandon projects and move on and try and recode them and uh i see sometimes see that with delphi projects saying oh we're going to go and we should go and use some new you know dot net framework or some you know something like that and i think you know i don't know why you're doing that because you 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 you're going down a path that might end up being a bit of a blind alley i think um so yeah so uh so actually also from uh, sky buck flying who actually is uh as a does a lot of comments <laughs> um calculator is hard need compiler tech to be able to decode interpret the formulas as an example well actually do you know what uh one of the um uh Delphi MVPs did actually use the eval function, which I completely forgot about. And uh, and I did everything the hard way. And actually, there were bugs in my program. And I was penalized um, on my scores for the bugs. But they were fairly minor. But it was to do with the um, calculating some square roots and things like that, I think, or something like that. Um, but I made up for it in every other direction. So there you go. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, Cledison Meyer. On my cletus i'm not sure um so they love it intro web i didn't use intro web um for the uh web part of it um because i wanted to uh, be able to target more than just a set of web pages i, I did a vcl project did fire monkey project and because i knew what the there was a nice clearly defined task i was able to design that back-end uh interface object and then I could reuse that in VCL or FMX without having the user interface uh, get in the way, so passing objects and things like that. Um, but because of that, I could also do the same thing with the Timis web core project. I could have done it with Interweb, but it's actually slightly different. Interweb is just a little bit more uh, involved in what I would want to do. But by using Timis web core, I could then say, well, okay, here's a proper web app, a set of web pages, and now I'll click a, a little checkbox in my compiler, and within two to five minutes, I was able to then target Electron because that's the strength of that. Now, the reason I did that and the reason I use the Fluent UI um, uh, components as well was, as someone said, oh, well, you're just throwing money at it. And again, Sky Buck flying, who's uh, uh, dominating the comments, but I'm glad you're doing it. Uh, oh, so you were allowed to throw money at it. Actually, no, that's not what I tried to do. What I tried to demonstrate is that the power of Delphi is first of all that it can target lots of things straight out of the box, but secondly that there's a rich ecosystem of components that if I just drop those on, it does 90% of the hard work for me in terms of the fluent UI. So I was trying to emphasize that we can um, make things look really good without writing lots of code. And yes, if I paid you know hundred dollars or whatever the fluent UI product, um, components cost. 
um, I would suddenly have a Fluid UI app, UI app. Now, if you extend that out into a real-world application that you want to make lots of money out of a commercial application rather than a test as this was, the Fluent UI pro, um, components or indeed any of our component vendors, any of the tech partners, can make your work a lot easier to do and, and a lot less difficult. Uh, so one thing well, also I, is that we did, it was, uh, it looked at like the cost and the hours both, because the reality is time is money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, you know, if you use uh, some components, right, your cost goes up, but it possibly reduces your time. And so there's a trade off there. In that. Yeah, and, and then in fact, I only did those additional projects just to demonstrate uh, and make a point uh, about being able to target absolutely everything. Um, the ones that were judged, I think, were the VCL and FireMonkey. I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure. Um, but why did I do the web apps? No, it wasn't a requirement. I just wanted to do it because I wanted to make an absolute point that Delphi is incredibly powerful. And, uh, and uh, an average programmer like myself can target absolutely everything with not a massive amount of skill sets um, required. Uh, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm an MVP, so I know a thing or two, but even so, there are plenty of people out there much better programmers than me, and it, you could do it, you know, very easily. Uh, and someone, this is a kind of off-topic question, but related. So if a random person would want to present a project in the future, um, what would we need to do? Con contact Jim and or contact me um, and if you've got something to um, present, this goes back to the enterprise um, articles as well. If you've got a success story or you want to um, demonstrate a technique, particularly if it's a unique one or, or something that shows the power of Delphi, um, get in touch and uh, and we'll see what we can do. Because we always want to talk about the benefits of Delphi because that's really what we're here for is to try and illustrate that, um, you know, the power of the language, the power of Rad Studio and C++ Builder. Although this is DelphiCon, C++ Builder is also very much um, part of that that uh, Rad Studio oeuvre, as the word would be. And, uh, you know, if you've got something that's, that, that demonstrates the product, don't just rely on MVPs like me or or other people like that. Yes, regular people, just get in touch. You're just normal programmers and, hey, you know, you, I, I'm admirable. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, normal programmers, regular programmers, just get in touch. And if you've got something you want to demonstrate, by all means, if, if it's a good idea, as I've said before, a good idea is a good idea and people are not going to necessarily tend to that. There are some complications about timing and things like that. So, uh, you know, but get in touch. Um, I think that was all the questions I starred. Um, the others were really about, you know, why web apps and stuff like that, just because I could and because I knew Electron was part of it. So why not take all my Delphi code and hit a button and out comes an Electron app? I don't know anything about Electron apart from how it works. Uh, I didn't write one single line of code um, for, in Node.js or anything like that. I hit a button, the Delphi compiler produced an Ele Electron app for me. So uh, that was kind of nice. So that was Pretty good. Um, what else? Have we got any other questions? I want to add a comment, actually. There was, I was talking to another MVP a while back, and he was hired to build an Android app for a project. And he, uh, the the nature of it, it was because of connecting all these different services and stuff like that. But he was shipping them. He had these regular meetings with the team, and he was shipping them a Windows application that they were running to interact with and stuff like that. And they'd hired another team to build the Windows application, and he was just hired to build the Android application. And all of a sudden, someone goes, wait a second, this is running on Windows, right? And he's like, yeah, it's because it's easier to demo for a meeting on Windows. Yeah. And like, we, we hired another team to build the Windows application, and they're behind schedule. Can you do the Windows application? He's like, yeah, it's almost already done. <laughs> and, and that's the one of the beauties of it is that, you know, there is there are some nuances to each platform. Um, I You know, it, we like to say it's, you know, click compile and run. There's always nuances, just different behaviors and stuff like that you want to take into account, which the Delphi makes it easy to do. But it, it is that easy to just add a new platform. The most difficult conversation I have with, with product owners is they've got a desktop app and they say, I understand with Delphi you can target FireMonkey and uh, and uh, so can you turn this into an iOS app? <laughs> uh, and I then try and explain that you've got 
you know, maybe a 2K screen with lots of real estate, and now you're going down to a device this large. And yeah, you could do that, but um, no, it's not as simple as that. The the desktop metaphor, whether it's Linux, whether it's uh, um, uh, Mac OS or Windows, is not the same as a mobile device. And I think that um, most of the people watching the stream will get that and understand that. But uh, product owners or people who are looking to um, diversify and have some some apps written just don't really um, always appreciate that. And, and I did uh, show that comment there. Good programmers are definitely not normal. No, I, I think that's important not to be normal. <laughs> We're all a bit crazy, really. A bit crazy? Yeah, definitely, for sure. I think also, a uh, joking aside, you know, programming does, um, or software development, does actually um, attract a certain character of people. Um, it is odd to sit in a room all day and just uh, spill your brain onto the uh, computer. I know writers do that as well, and I'm a writer as well, so I guess I'm doubly cursed. But, uh, yeah, it's odd, but... I mean, that's the same as saying, you know, a, a movie star is an odd kind of personality because they have to be in order to be able to do that job. They've got to be able to remember lots of lines and pretend to be other people all day long. And that's got to make you a bit weird, right? So, you know, yep. it's one of those things. Thank you, Ian, for your session and all you do. I, you've been involved a lot here in DelphiCon helping out, especially yesterday. I had some technical issues. So thank, no you, problem. thank you for that. I'm going to go off and have lunch now. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks.